All right, so today we're gonna show you how to run LS style rockers on your small block Chevy, like a Gen 1 small block Chevy head. Um, I'll talk a little bit more later about why you would even want to do that. But first let me show you how, because that's actually the first thing I wanna show you. Um, so these things right here are what is called easy locks. They're very similar to what people also call time certs or kind of like a helicoil, a little different, but what it's in originally intended to do is if you have threads that are stripped out, you can make the hole bigger and uh, thread it to this outside thread, put this into it, and then the inside of the hole is the correct threads. Well, just so happens that this particular one is already the thread that you need it to be to <clears throat> screw into a screw-in stud small block Chevy head. Um, inside of this is eight millimeter one two five. The outside is seven sixteenths twenty. Um, <clears throat> now, when you first get these, uh, if you come up here close, you see how the threads are actually all the way to the tip of them, essentially. Mm -hmm. When you first get them, they it kind of stops a little shallow. So you have to run a die over these to make them thread into the head nicely. Your other option would be to get the uh, special. Uh, tap that they make for this this like thread it thread repair kit and if you ran that tap in the head you could also just thread these right in like you're supposed to but uh, I decided to do the die so that I wouldn't have to modify the head permanently now that this that sounds simple like oh just run a die over it but it's a little bit more tricky than that I'm gonna show you the little the trick of how I figured out because I, I broke a lot of these figure trying to figure out how to do this so what you do is you take your m8125 bolt you got right here and you put a washer on it right there okay then you screw this onto here. Don't screw it till the thread's in though. Just screw it where there's still some threads left. Then you slide the washer up against this, come over here to the vise, and you put it in the vise, and you let this set against the washer set sitting on this vise teeth. That way, when you screw the die onto it, and, and you will have to, once you're done, you will have to flip this back over to get the top couple threads because you're gonna miss them, but that way when you screw the die onto it and you're done, you unscrew this vice and it's not stuck on the very end of this bolt if you just put the bolt in here like that it's going to screw all the way down until it gets to the end of the threads it and, it, and you won't be able to get it back off the bolt exactly mm -hmm. and, and even if you put like a bunch of nuts on here so that it's got some space it'll get too tight against the nuts and you won't be able to get it back off mm -hmm. without messing up the threads you just re-thread it yeah so that's the first step once you get this done like that you just screw it into the head just like that. It's super simple. Now you will want to probably put some Loctite when you're final installing this because um, some heads like these, the intake ports go into the, like the th threads go into the intake port. So you don't want to create a vacuum leak or leak oil into there. Mm -hmm. um, and the Loctite would stop that. And also it'll keep these from coming out when you want to unscrew the bolt. Then you got to find yourself, after you've done that, you got to find yourself one of these. <clears throat> this is a rocker pedestal off of a 4.3 small block uh, Chevy like V6, um, th but it's a Vortec one. It'll come with these, what kind of appear like stamp steel, normal stamp steel rockers with a roller trunnion on them. Um, you just take these pieces off. Now the spacing of these is a little different. So what you have to do is cut them into individual two pieces. I just haven't done it yet. Um, after you've screwed that in, you got yourself one of these. Um, here, pause it for just a second. Not my JDM speed box. Trying to make my uh, car faster than mm -hmm. yours. I stole the JDM speed on yours. Hey, you fast JDM on American Muscle. Yeah. JDM speed, we only sell stuff for LSs. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Japanese domestic market for a Chevy. Okay. So after you've got, huh? you need to get those. Not these two, because no. I'm getting away. Okay. So after you've got your little threaded insert adapter inside there, and you've got your little pieces, you'll have them separated when you're going to actually final install these. You take your two two, which is what this is. This is a two two, uh, like a 1998 two two um, Chevy out of like S10 or like a Cavalier rocker arm looks very similar to an LS rocker arm. 
I'll explain in a second why you have to use this one and not just a normal LS. Um, and you're gonna take this, set it in your, set it on your vice edge. This bolt is kind of pressed into here, so you just hammer it until it comes <coughs> out. Okay, so you're gonna end up with something like this. All right, and all you gotta do is put your LS rocker arm bolt through there and you just bolt it down. And this will run all the way down. Now, <clears throat> let me talk a little bit why you about why you have to use this rocker. Well, I guess not necessarily have to, but you should use this rocker. This is off of a, like I said, a 1998 and up S10 2.24 cylinder. It has a rocker ratio from what I've read, of 1.54 to 1. A stock small block Chevy is 1.5 to 1. Now, what you're probably thinking is, well, why don't you use an LS? You can get a 1.7 to 1 ratio. You can get a little bit more lift without having to buy a camshaft. LS rockers are super easy to find and cheap. You know, that sounds like a good idea. Well, the problem with that is, on an LS rocker, the way it gets extra ratio is by this tip being further out. And it does technically kind of work but the tip doesn't have a very good contact patch on the valve and it would wear your vi valve guides out kind of fast now if you were wanting to run like a um drag car probably would never have an issue because you're going to be taking that car apart so often that you, you would never run it enough to wear those out but if you're wanting to run this on the street i would highly recommend getting these instead of an ls style rocker but an ls style rocker will bolt right onto here and will you know move the valve up and down but it's just not quite the right geometry. Um, the other advantage to these over an LS style rocker is it LS style rockers have a, a lift limit um, on them because of the way they're built. Let me go grab one of those and show you. This will show you the difference in the tip like I'm trying to tell you. This one sticks out a little further so the geometry is not as good. Also these, although they look a lot like LS rockers, are a little different, they're a little wider, they're just, just a little different really is all. But if you look right here is where there's a big difference. So on an LS rocker, it's got this little like cap that holds little needle bearings in and there's a limit to how far it can move. Now you can get quite a bit of lift out of these, don't get me wrong, but there is a limit. When you do a rocker trunnion upgrade on one of these, it removes this entire little bearing thing, it allows it to, if there wasn't a bolt in there, completely spin freely. So the, what limits your lift is not the trunnion at all, is when the bolt hits the edge of the uh, rocker. Well, <clears throat> these almost already have the rocker trunnion upgrade in them. You can sit there and rotate it the whole way around. There's no limit to the lift on them. Um, the other good thing about this is that because it's a stock 1.5 to 1 ratio, or 1.54, it's very similar to a small block Chevy, the lift values you get from a cam manufacturer will still apply you won't have to really convert them if you did it with one of these you would have to convert the lift because like let's say you get a 500 lift cam for a small block chevy it's going to be a lot more than 500 lift with this rocker arm and it could approach the limit of the rocker arm and cause you to mess stuff up <clears throat> uh, the other good or other thing that i would say about these is some people like on the rocker training upgrade that there's a c-clip around it because i think these can fall out um, although that is a possibility, I guess. Um, I you know, work in a machine shop. I've talked to several people that have been around these even longer than me, and they have never seen an LS, a 2.2, any of these ever fall, just fall out. And I mean, these engines go five, 600,000 miles and they don't fall out. I don't really foresee that being an issue, but a rocker training upgrade kit will fit on these rockers. So if you really, really don't like that, you can just do a normal LS rocker training upgrade. But the main advantage to all of this and why you wouldn't just go buy a set of roller rockers is these are almost free. I mean, you can, you know, you can find these in any junkyard. Um, they actually do come in some V6s. So, you know, when you're looking at them to verify you have the right ones, they're going to look like this, not like a stamp steel rocker. But these do come in some V6 uh, engines from what I understand. So they're very easy to find. They're pro I bet you could get a set of 16 of these for probably 50 bucks. And you're looking at 50 bucks for the little thread adapter. So $100, and these are good, you know, reliable roller rockers versus if you were to buy some $100 Chinese ones, you don't know what the reliability is gonna be like. Um, it does not have a roller tip. To me, I don't really think that makes much of a difference, you know, in a normal performance engine. Now, you know, if you had a 
crazy high horsepower engine that's making like you know 1500 horsepower yeah you want to go ahead and get the expensive nice rockers because you probably have the money but for a budget build this is the best budget roller rocker you can get for a small block chevy the other good thing about it is rather than having a stud that's adjustable <clears throat> it has this pedestal that is much stronger once that's all bolted together that is significantly stronger than a bolt i mean we're talking you know double the thickness of even a even a 7 16 stud um you're not going to have any high rpm deflection with this it's going to be you know very capable just like an ls valve train is so that is in my opinion the best budget way to run your rocker arms on a small block chevy mm -hmm. so one more and a little side note if you have a set of heads like this where it's never had the rocker pedestals cut down you could I don't really know this for sure because I've never pulled one of these out. You probably could go ahead and thread it straight to M8 by 1.25 like it needs to be. Um, if not, you would just need them to thread it to 7 16 20 just like any other uh, small block Chevy that you'd be putting rocker studs in. And then you can do exactly what I just said. But if there is enough room here, which I think there is, you could just go straight to the correct thread. But what they do when they machine these, if you ever wanted to you know, put screw in studs in them, is they machine these, these flat just like on my head so that you can put a screw and stud in. So if your heads start out like this, you know, you may just be able to go straight to the correct thread is what I'm saying um, without having to get those thread adapters. Then it's even cheaper. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is showing the uh, geometry of the rocker. Um, it is very, very similar to a factory uh stamp steel rocker or a ls roller rock or a normal rocker like the geometry of it that's what i kind of based it off of and if you do a sweep pattern on the valve it's almost perfectly in the middle it's you know a little wider than what you would expect with like a roller rocker but that's that is to be expected because this isn't a roller tip rocker but it, it works perfectly now um another let me get it a little more like perpendicular there so you can see when it goes down works like it should um another cool thing about these rockers that i didn't actually think was going to work but did end up working is you can take a one of like the bigger style almost like a big block retainer <coughs> and it does actually clear the rocker plenty good so you don't even have to use like ls retainers with this you can use whatever kind of retainers you want it does not hit the does not hit the rocker arm or anything so it, it really is a pretty easy thing to do. There's not a whole lot of other modifications. Um, if you, you know, if you get those little thread adapters I talked about, there's no permanent modifications to the heads whatsoever. Um, you could go right back to the old way if you didn't like this. Um, the only permanent modification you're making to anything is these little uh, pieces right here. You're gonna have to cut them into separate because they don't perfectly align up with, um, <clears throat> well, they do perfectly line up with this many of them, but I mean, you could just, you really could just use this and then cut a singular one off of another one and put it right here, but I just think it'd look better just to cut them all separate. But another, oh, and then let me show you guys what it looks like when you put a LS rocker on there and why that just doesn't really work as good, at least. And I did, when I was doing this, play around with shimming the bottom of it and actually getting an even shorter pedestal. No amount of really shimming it ever made it quite right. I, I don't think that there is a way to make this good enough that it would really be usable on a like a daily driver type vehicle. You could definitely probably use it on like a drag car, but I wouldn't run it on the street a lot. So right now, this pedestal is actually too, uh, too high. Is the first problem with this so when you go down see how it's contacting just the very 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 outside tip of the valve the other one is on that side of the valve but not that bad um, that's going to put a lot of force on the, this direction on the valve which is going to wear the valve guide out um, if you were to somehow you know reset the holes this way some it would work perfect but it's just it's not going to work this way very well 
like I said, on a drag race engine, you're only going to, you know, you're going to redo your heads every you know, 100 passes or so. It would probably last, but that's just uh, something to consider. Um, but if you just want to make a little bit more power and you get a little bit more lift out of it, and you don't really care about the consequences, then yeah, this would also work. Come on. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. These do clear a uh, big style uh, valve spring retainer as well. So either one works with that, that bigger style of valve spring retainer, no matter what you do. Cool. <clears throat>